Hi everybody, this is Lars Vermeer and welcome to another Love VFX tutorial. In this video, I'll be talking about Yeti for Maya, which is a plugin that lets you create hair, feathers, and scattered geometry in a node based workflow. I will show you how to get started with Yeti for Maya, from a simple hair grooming workflow to simulating and caching the Yeti hair for animation. Creating digital hair can be a very complex topic, and in this video, I will try to give you an overview of Yeti for Maya with just enough information to get you started without going into too much detail. The workflow I'll be showing you is just one way to do it. I'm still learning how to use this tool myself, and I wanted to share what I've learned so far, which was just enough to put some hair on this animated character. Yeti is a node-based system like Foundry's Nuke or Houdini from SideFX, which means that your hair setup is being represented by a node graph. That makes it very efficient to work with. Yeti's grooms let you manually control the appearance of your hair. Before you start using Yeti, you should make sure that your hair geometry has UVs. These are important for texture related modifications, like defining where your hair should grow, and for simulation and animation. A good way to work with Yeti is to keep your hair set up in one Maya file and your animations in separate files to keep everything clean and organized. And if you want to put some hair on your character, it's not a bad idea to do that in a neutral or T-pose. The first thing you need to do to create hair with Yeti is to create a Yeti node and a groom. So let's select our character, go to the upper Yeti menu and click on Create Yeti Node on Mesh. This creates a Yeti node that is connected with your mesh. And you can see that in the Yeti node settings where it says Graph and Input Objects. To create the groom, we have to select our mesh again, go to the upper Yeti menu and click on Create Groom on Mesh. These buttons can also be found in the Yeti shelf. Now we have to connect our groom to our Yeti node. So let's select our Yeti node, go to the Yeti Shape tab, and under Input Grooms, click on Add Grooms. Now let's select the groom we have just created and the one I have previously created to speed things up in a moment. We can open up Yeti's graph editor by selecting our Yeti node, going to the upper Yeti menu and clicking on Open Graph Editor. Or by going to Yeti's shelf menu and clicking on this button where it says GE. Now this is where the fun starts. This upper menu lets you create nodes that represent a particular task, which you can also find out if you hover over them. I will just talk about the ones we need for this hair setup. The first thing we need to do here is import our character geo and our groom. So let's create two import nodes by clicking on this button where it says import. Leave the import type of the first node set to geometry and switch the import type of the second node to groom. So we can import our geo with the respective selection button where it says selection. And import the groom we have just created. Now we can rename these nodes to Geo and Groom. The Geo node will be the base of our node graph setup and the Groom will be the tool that lets us manually modify the look of our hair. Now let's select our Geo import node, create a scatter, a grow, width, and a comb node, which automatically connects them. Select and copy and paste them and I will get to why I duplicated these nodes later in this video. To make the hair look a bit thicker in the viewport, I will go to the display settings of the Yeti node and change the viewport width to 4. Now I will modify the settings of these nodes in the node graph to make them work for this tutorial. But keep in mind that this is just one way to do it and you should experiment with these settings for yourself to find out what works best for you and your projects. Now these two buttons are on all of the nodes. The one on the left lets you look at the state of your graph from that node and the one on the right lets you disable the node. The scatter node lets you create your hair roots, which lets you control the density of your hair. The grow node makes the hair grow from these roots and it lets you control the length of your hair. The length can also be modified with the groom by connecting it to the grow node's lower input. The width node controls the hair's width and the comb node modifies the hair with the help of the groom. 
by connecting the groom to the lower input of the comb node. Now if we look at the grow node, it looks terrible. Funny, but terrible. We also have hair in areas like the face, the feet and the hands. That is why I have created two textures for the two UV tiles of this character that will control where the hair grows, with a simple black and white map. To implement these hair density controlling maps into this node system, we have to create a texture node by clicking on this button where it says texture. Plug it in before the scatter nodes. Double click on the texture node. Paste the correct file path into this field. Written like this at the end, if you have multiple tiled or UDIM textures for your character, rename the attribute to density and paste this line into the V coordinate field. Now you can see how the texture maps are controlling the density of our character's hair. I recommend to use a TIFF file format for this task. Now this is where our groom comes into play. The groom will let us define the look of our hair. But in order to do that, we have to create a groom that looks good first. So let's disable our Yeti node, select our groom, and click on this button where it says Edit. This is the groom interface that lets you create and modify hair strands that can change the way your character's hair, feathers, or scattered geometry looks. The groom also lets you create and paint attributes that you can use and add to Yeti's node graph to control numeric values in nodes, like the amount of hair clumping on your character. I will show you how you can achieve this effect in a moment. If you hover over these buttons, you get a little tooltip that explains what they are for. The next thing we need to do to make our hair look better is to place a few strands on this character that will control the appearance of the hair. To place hair strands, you can use the scatter button, which will randomly create a lot of strands if you paint on the character's surface, or you can use the plus button that lets you create one hair strand at a time if you uncheck this groom setting where it says populate at mesh points. I prefer to use the plus button to create just a few strands and have better control over the broad appearance and the flow of the hair. Now let's uncheck the display of these attribute roots under attribute paint because we don't need them right now. Make our brush size a bit smaller by pressing B and clicking and dragging on the geo surface and lower the initial strand length and the groom settings to 0.2. And now with this add brush activated, let's create a few strands all over the character's body. And when we are done with that, comb them with this comb brush right here just to give the hair a general direction. If you want to have more control over your character's hair in certain areas, you just need to create more hair strands in those areas and shape them how you want. All of these brushes will help you to shape your strands. You can comb them, sculpt them, lift them, trim them, and much more. You can also invert the effect of your brush by going to a negative number with the strength slider in the brush settings, which can be very useful if you want to make your hair strands longer or shorter with the scale brush. If you are new to Yeti for Maya, I suggest that you should take some time to get used to the groom node and its options, because it mostly defines the look of your hair with its brushes and paintable attributes. For the sake of this demonstration, let's say we would be fine with this groom. To make it have an effect on the hair, we need to connect it to our grow and comb node. So let's unhide the Yeti node, and with it selected, open the node graph editor, and connect our imported groom to the lower inputs of our grow and comb nodes. Okay, this still doesn't look good but you can definitely see how the groom is changing the length and look of our hair. In order to speed things up, I've prepared a groom that should make the hair look even better. So let's select our import groom node, select the groom I've prepared, and delete the other groom. And there you go. The only difference between this groom and the one I've just deleted is a bit more time and work to make it look like that. To make this hair look a bit more natural, 
Let's select our upper comb node and create a scraggle node, which is this button up here where it says scraggle. Now I will modify a few of this node settings. And right away you can see that the hair starts to look more organic and less polished. Now I will show you how you can add a clumping effect to your hair that naturally appears in human and animal hairs. I've previously duplicated these nodes for that clumping effect. To make it work correctly, we need to select the scraggle node, create a clumping node, which is this button that looks like a mustache, and connect the second comb node to the lower input of our clumping node. Now all of the hairs from the upper nodes are clumping to the hairs from the lower nodes. To decrease this effect, I will change a few settings in the clumping node. The last thing I will show you to modify the look of this hair is painting attributes. And I will therefore paint the amount of clumping on this character because I just want to see this effect in a few areas. So, painting attributes in Yeti, like the amount of clumping on a character or any numeric value in Yeti's node graph, is very important because it lets you access the full power of the groom when it comes to making the hair look exactly how you want. In order to create a paintable attribute, we have to do a few things. We have to add an attribute in our groom by selecting our groom and adding it to the attribute list in the groom shape tab. So let's create a new one and call it CLP. Then we have to paint its influence on the roots of our groom strands. So let's double click on our new attribute, set our attribute paint value to black, click on the attribute paintbrush, and click on this fill button, which makes all of our attribute roots black. Now let's set our attribute paint value to white, decrease our brush size, paint a bit on the attribute roots, And now, I want to connect this painted attribute to the weight value of our clumping node in the node graph. Therefore, we have to insert an attribute node right after the scraggle node by selecting the scraggle node and clicking on this button that says Attribute. In its settings, we have to rename the attribute and groom attribute value to our custom attribute CLP. Check this box where it says Sample Groom. Connect the Groom node to the lower input of this attribute node. And rename the weight value of our clumping node to our custom attribute CLP. If we go back and forth between the name of our attributes and the value 1, we can clearly see how our painted attributes modifies the look of our hair. Now comes the final part of this Yeti tutorial, which is the simulation of the hair. This part will get very technical, so just bear with me. Once we are happy with the Yeti hair, we have to export it for our animation or rendering scenes. To export it, we have to select the Yeti node, go to the upper Yeti menu, and click on Export Groom from Selected Yeti node. Let's call this one Yeti. In order to properly reconnect our animated character from another scene to this Yeti hair for simulation, we have to create and export a texture reference object. So here's how you create and export the necessary texture reference object of your hair geo. Switch to Maya's rendering layout, select the hair geo, Go to the upper texturing menu and click on Create Texture Reference Object. Once it's created, we have to select it and export it. 
I like to export it as a Maya binary file. Now let's switch to the animation scene, in which I've already imported the animated character and the texture reference object. But before we connect our texture reference object to our animated geo, we have to make sure that the name of our animated geo is exactly the same as the name of our hair geo in our hair grooming scene. Otherwise, we will get an error message when we try to import the groom for animation. Now, to connect our texture reference object to our animated geo, we have to open the connection editor, make sure that the show hidden checkbox in the left and right display menus is checked, load the texture reference shape to the left, and our animated geo shape to the right side. Then we have to connect the message on the left side to the reference object on the right side. Now we have to continue by selecting our animated geo, creating a Yeti node on the mesh as we have done before, switching the Yeti node's input mode to cache, importing our groom where it says input cache file name, and clicking on override cache with inputs. Now let's go to the first frame of our animation and check if our hair is moving along with our animated character. Select the Yeti node, and in the upper Yeti menu, we have to click on Import Groom from Selected Yeti node. Now let's select our Yeti node and set our input mode back to None. Disable Override Cache with Inputs. Check the Simulation checkbox in the Groom node. Set our dynamic fur properties if we want to. Select our Yeti node again. Set the output cache file name in the Yeti node to something like this. I will paste a file path here from my folder structure. Now we have to set our frame range and samples. And click on write cache, which I have already done. So let's go back to our groom node and uncheck the simulation checkbox. Go back to our Yeti node, copy the output cache location, clear it, paste it into the input cache location, set the input mode to cache, and we're done. We can verify if the hair is actually simulated by taking a closer look at it. It took me quite some time to learn how to do all of this, and I just wanted to create a tutorial that explains some of the most important aspects of using Yeti for Maya, from start to finish. Before I go, I wanted to thank my friend Björn Blabjerk Sörensen, who I learned most of these Yeti workflows from. You can check out his Yeti tutorials and all of his other tutorials and videos on his Vimeo page. So thank you very much for all of your awesome Yeti tutorials, Björn, because I wouldn't have been able to create this tutorial without them. All right, I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and that you will enjoy using Yeti for Maya in the future. If you want to see more of these videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Again, this is Lars Vermeer. Thanks for watching and goodbye everybody.